Hi everyone, it's lovely to see you. I'm Lorna and we're reading The Boy at the Back of the Class by Anjali Q. Ralph and this is chapter 10. War and Missing Pieces. On the day after the big fight, just as Tom had guessed, Amit became famous. In the playground, wherever he went, people pointed and gasped and called him the boy who beats Brendan the bully. And they asked him lots of questions like, is it true you can do a hundred punches in under a minute? And what were you really fighting over? Was it your parents ran some money? And when are you going to fight again? Can we come and watch? After a while, Miss Hemsey began to tell everyone to leave Amit alone. So everyone started asking Michael and Josie and Tom and me their questions instead. I didn't say much and neither did Michael, but Josie and Tom got so excited that they started to add new bits to the story so that by the end of the week, most of the school believed Amit hadn't just beaten up Brendan the bully, but had fought Chris and Liam too over a suitcase full of red diamonds and a pink basketball. All of this made Brendan the bully skill more than ever, but even though he stared at us all the time and Chris and Liam showed us their fists whenever they saw us, they didn't chase us around the playground or steal Josie's football or smash into us when we were carrying our lunch trays like we thought they would. I bet he's scared of us now that we've got Amit, grinned Tom. Yeah, said Josie, he's a proper scaredy cat now. But Michael said he didn't like it one little bit and that he bet Brendan the bully was up to something. At first, I didn't believe him, but then lots of strange things began to happen to Amit. The first thing happened just two days after the big fight. We had all been decorating a new pot for our photosynthesis plant, and Mrs Can had given Amit a golden star because his plant had grown faster than anyone else's. I think it was because every morning before Mrs Can called the register, he would watch it and talk to it for one whole minute. I didn't know that plants could speak different languages, but when I asked Mrs Can about it, she said plants could speak every language under the sun and that the more languages they heard, the faster they grew. Amit was really proud of his golden star and he got a silver one too for decorating his pot with pictures of seashells and whales and fish. But when we got back from last break this afternoon, his pot was lying broken on the floor and his plant had been stamped on. Someone must have smashed it on purpose because nobody else's plant pots were hurt at all. Mrs Can said if the person who did it didn't put up their hand right away, they would be in big trouble. But nobody did put their hands up, so the mystery of the murdered plant pot stayed a mystery. Then, almost exactly a week after the mystery of the murdered plant pot, came the day of the deathly worm tree. After assembly one morning, Mrs Can told us all to get our workbooks out of our class trays. But when Amit pulled his open, he found it bursting with a whole pile of large, fat, wriggling worms. He cried out and dropped the tree on the floor so that all the worms went flying across the room. That made Dean, who sits on the table behind me, be sick all over his table. Dean is scared of anything that doesn't have any legs on it, even snails, but he hates worms the worst. Mr Whitaker, the school cleaner, had to come and clean it all up and Mrs Can and Miss Hemsey were very angry and checked all our trees. But no one else had a single worm in their tree, not even Tony the nose picker, who likes to collect all kinds of strange things in his tree. Mrs Can told the person who had done it to put their hands up again and this time she looked at Brendan the bully as if she wasn't really speaking to any of us and only to him. But again, nobody put their hand up, so Mrs Can shook her head and said she was going to make sure that whoever it was would be caught soon and punished not just by her, but by Mrs Sanders too. And then, after that, came the worst trick of all, the one that everyone in school later called the Great Baked Beans Bag Trap. Every morning, right before Mrs Can takes the register, everyone has to put their school bags on their own special hook at the back of the class and we're only allowed to take our PE kits or homework or lunch boxes out when we're told to. Everyone knows whose bag is where because everyone's hook has their name on top. Just days after the day of the deathly worm tree, Mrs Can told us to get up and collect our PE kits from our bags, just like she always did on Wednesdays. But when Amit went to get his PE kit and unzipped his rucksack, a lumpy river of baked beans burst out and splodged and splashed all over him. Everyone cried out, Ew! and then instantly fell silent. Mrs Can was so angry when no one put their hand up again that she cancelled PE, and Mrs Sanders came and told the whole class off. 
It was horrible, especially because Amit started to cry when he saw what had happened to his PE kit and his bag. I think everyone knew it was Brendan the bully who had done all these things, but no one could prove it, not even Mrs Can. After that day, the door to the classroom was locked every break time and at lunchtime, which stopped anything else from happening to Amit's things. But I wanted more than anything for Brendan the bully to be caught and to prove he was a criminal. So Michael brought his granddad's magnifying glass in and we all searched for clues, but we couldn't find a single one, not even in the school bins. Amit was more upset about the great baked beans bad trap than any of the other things that had happened. And even though Miss Hemsey washed his rucksack with lots of washing up liquid, it looked even worse than before and smelled strange too. But Amit still brought it into school every day. I wanted to know why he didn't get a new one or why Miss Hemsey kept saying that it looked fine when it didn't. And then, just two days after the great baked beans bag trap, I found out. We had all put away our books and were getting ready for group story time, just like we always did on Fridays, when Mrs Can made a surprise announcement. Now everyone, she said, this is our last afternoon before we all break up for the half-term holidays and I thought we could do with a treat. Instead of us all reading a story together, we're going to listen to one instead. And it's a very important story because it's going to be told to us by someone very special in our class. Looking over at Amit and Miss Hemsey, she waved them over to where she was standing. I didn't know it just then, but I was about to have nearly all of my 11 original questions answered in one go. We all turned around to watch as Miss Hemsey picked up a large pile of papers from the table and followed Amit to the front of the class. I want everyone to listen extra carefully and I don't want anyone asking any questions until after Amit has finished telling his story. Is that understood? Yes, Mrs Can, shouted the class. Good. And leaning against her desk, Mrs Can smiled and said, Amit? Everyone shuffled in their chairs and sat up straight, waiting for Amit to speak. I wondered if he would tell the story in English or in Kurdish, but I was so excited I didn't really care. Hello, my name is Amit. I am nine years old and I am a refugee. I come from Syria. As he said this, he pointed to Miss Hemsey, who held up a drawing showing a house and a tree and a car in front of some mountains. And in the front of the car were four people, labelled me, mum, dad and sister, and a cat. I was surprised, because I had never thought about Amit having a brother or a sister. I thought he was like me and didn't have any. His sister wasn't at our school. In the picture she looked smaller than him, so maybe she was in nursery. But in Syria, there is big war, said Amit, and he pointed to Miss Hemsey again, who held up another picture. This one showed buildings on fire and bombs dropping from a plane and lots of people lying on the ground and other people holding guns. Josie stopped chewing her hair and looked at me and then looked back at the drawing again and from behind I heard someone whisper, whoa, he's seen a real bomb and a real gun. Because of war, my family run away, said Amit as his lion eyes became big and round and watery. We went on mountain and rivers and carry bags and cat. This time, Miss Hemsey held up a picture showing a family crossing mountains and rivers and in the sky, birds that were crying. In the picture, Amit had drawn himself carrying a red rucksack with a black stripe on it, just like the one he had now. That was when I knew why he loved it so much and why he cried when it had been filled with Brendan the Bully's horrible baked beans. He had carried it all the way from his house and over a mountain, which meant it was lots more important and lots more special than any of our bags. Then, nowhere safe, so we get on boats on Big Sea. This time, Miss Hemsey held up a drawing of a boat, but the boat wasn't like a normal boat with sails and pointy ends and wooden sides. This one was flat and round and was orange on the sides, just like the ones I had seen in the news that didn't have any toilets on them. And inside the boat were lots of people, all wearing vests that made them look like puffing birds. But there were people in the water too, and they had bubbles coming out of their mouths saying, help me. Everyone leaned forward in their chairs and tried to read the labels Amit had put over some of the people's heads. 
I saw me and mum and dad, but there wasn't one for sister or cat. I know cats don't like water because Josie has a cat and says it screams whenever it rains and always wants to stay inside. So maybe Amit's cat didn't want to get into the boat and maybe his sister didn't want to leave it behind. So she stayed behind to look after it. Then we are in another country called Greece, said Amit. We live in a tent with lots of people who run away like me. They come from lots of country like Afghanistan and Pakistan and Eritrea. The next picture showed a flag with blue and white stripes and a white cross in a blue corner. And next to it were lots of tents and people everywhere sitting next to fires and sleeping on the floor. In this picture, only the words me and dad could be seen. Amit's mum must be sleeping inside one of the tents. Then we walk long time in lots of country. It was cold and we sleep on floor. And then we stay in France. This time, Amit pointed to the next picture with his finger and showed us the railway tracks he had drawn. On it were people carrying suitcases and children and all of them were walking to a wall with barbed wire on top. Everyone looked sad and in the corner there were army tanks and soldiers holding guns and all the guns were pointing at the people with the suitcases and children. Miss Hemsey held this drawing up for longer than any of the others because Amit was looking at it and didn't seem to want to stop staring at it. Then I come here and come to school. I like here, no bombs. It's safe and I like new friends and teacher and play football. Amit stood and stared at everyone and everyone stared back. Mrs Can blew her nose loudly and Miss Hemsey put the drawings down and gave Amit a hug. Thank you, Amit, said Mrs Can, standing up and putting a hand on his shoulder. Everyone, let's give Amit a huge round of applause for being so brave and for sharing his story with us. We all clapped, but we didn't clap as loud as we usually do for stories because I think we were feeling strange. I don't think any of us had ever heard a story like it before. And as sad and as scary as it was, it was even sadder and scarier because it wasn't just a made-up story from one of our reading books. It was all real. Amit had survived everything his pictures had shown us and was here with us. Knowing that made me feel sorry and proud and scared for him all at once. But most of all, it made me want to tell him he was definitely the bravest person I knew. Now, as you have seen, Amit's story is very special and I'm sure you have lots of questions you want to ask him, said Mrs Can. Everyone's hands immediately shot up into the air, but I think mine was first. That's wonderful, smiled Mrs Can, as she signalled us to put her hands back down. But as Amit is still learning his English words, we're only going to ask him three questions. I want you all to write down just one question for him on a piece of paper. Mrs Can walked around and gave us each a thin slip of blank paper. And when you're done, Miss Hemsey is going to pick out three questions we can ask him. You have a few minutes to think of your question and to write it out in your very best handwriting. Try to get all your spellings right and remember, just one question each. The entire class fell quiet as everyone grabbed their pencils, put their heads down and wrote out their questions. I had lots of questions that I wanted to ask, but I picked the one that was most new and wrote that one out. After a few minutes, Mrs Can said her time was up and Miss Hemsey collected all the bits of paper. Everyone began to whisper to one another as Mrs Can and Miss Hemsey looked through her questions and either shook their heads or nodded. What did you ask? whispered Tom, turning around. I asked why you didn't stay in Greece because the weather's warmer there and they have more seaside places, whispered back Josie. Oh, I asked how fast he had to run to get away from the bombs, whispered Tom. Michael, what did you ask? whispered Josie, leaning forward and poking Michael on the shoulder. I asked if it was scary to be in the boat and if he was on it at night time, said Michael. That's two questions, whispered Josie, shaking her head. Then she looked at me. What did you ask? I asked what happened to his cat and what his sister's name is, I answered. Oh, said Tom, but that's two questions as well. Right, everyone, said Mrs Can, clapping her hands so that we all stopped whispering and looked to the front of the class. We have some excellent questions here, but we've chosen three. I'm going to say them in English and then Miss Hemsey is going to translate both the question and answer for us. Right. The first question is, what did your mum and dad do in Syria? Miss Hemsey spoke to Amit in Kurdish and he said something back. 
Miss Hemsey nodded and then looked at us and said, Amit's father was a teacher and his mother wrote for a newspaper. Everyone in class nodded and we waited for Mrs Cann to read out the next question. I crossed my fingers extra tight in the hopes that it would be mine. The next question is, what did you like doing most before the war happened? We waited for Miss Hemsey to tell Amit what the question was and then reply. He liked to play football with his friends, answered Miss Hemsey, and going to the park with his grandfather and eating kibbe. She smiled at Amit and before any of us could ask what a kibbe was, she explained a kibbe is a very special snack which is filled with minced meat in the middle and is covered with lots of delicious spices. It's very famous in Syria and it looks like... Miss Hemsey went over to the blackboard and quickly drew a shape. It looked like a small American football. Is that the right shape, Amit? she asked. Amit nodded. We all looked at each other and tried to imagine what an American football with minced meat in the middle might taste like. As Mrs Can held up the last slip of paper, I decided to cross both my fingers and toes, but it didn't work. Because then she said, and the last question is, do you still sleep in a tent or do you sleep in a house now? When Amit heard this question from Miss Hemsey, he shook his head and said something. No, he sleeps in a house now, said Miss Hemsey, and he is happy because there is a toilet in it and hot water and food. As we all nodded to each other, Mrs Can put her arm around Amit and said, let's give Amit another round of applause, shall we? This time, nearly everyone clapped much louder than before, and Michael even cried out, woohoo, as Amit and Miss Hemsey went and sat back down. But I could see Brendan the bully mouthing boo and making a face as if something smelled and Liam giving a double thumbs down. I looked back at Mrs Can and Miss Hemsey, hoping they had seen too, but they were busy looking at Amit. Right now everyone, before we leave today, I want you all to listen to me very carefully. Mrs Can clapped her hands once and waited for everyone to settle back down. As I said, you all had some fantastic questions for Amit, and I'm very proud of you for thinking up such interesting and thoughtful ones too. But, and here she looked at us with her eyebrows raised, which meant she was being extra serious and would be extra angry if we didn't listen to her. I'm sure I don't have to tell you that running away from a war and leaving your home is a very hard thing to do. And it's especially hard when you have to try and put all the missing pieces of your life back together in a place that's new and strange to you. Then Mrs Can quickly glanced at me and Josie and Michael and Tom and said, I know that some of you miss Amit when he's not allowed to go out and play and I know that you have lots of questions for him but it's very important that he talks to people who know what he's been through and who can help him feel better and it's even more important that they can ask him the kinds of questions you all want to ask him in a safe and secluded space first before he's ready to speak to other people more, okay? Josie looked over at me, and I looked over at her, and Tom and Michael looked over their shoulders at us. So that was what seclusion was for. It was so that Amit could talk to people. So, continued Mrs Can, I want you all to promise me that you won't ask Amit any more questions about the war or about his family without asking me or Miss Hemsey first. Is that understood? Yes, Mrs Can, said the class, as the bell for home time began to ring. Good. Now, row one, put away your things and off you go. Make sure you all have everything you need for your homework assignments for the half term and I'll see you in a week's time. As we waited for our row to be called out, I looked over my shoulder at Amit and wondered what pieces he was still missing before he could put his life back together again. It was like a jigsaw, I thought. I hate doing jigsaws, even easy ones, because I always get bored halfway through and I couldn't imagine trying to do one that had pieces missing. I sure hoped that when he was running away from all the bullies and the bombs, Amit hadn't lost any of the important pieces on the way, and that if he had, someone was helping him find the new ones that were exactly the right shape and colours that he needed. Join me for chapter 11.